DBH on yeah. 634, 1.5. Okay. Suppressed and living. Yes. So now we're measuring the DBH on the trees. Um, basically, it's 1.3 meters up on the tree and we mark the tree on the south side. established five regional climate centres from around the world. Um, so there's one in North America, obviously. Um, there's one in Oxford, which serves Europe. And there's one in southern India. And so we have people from all around the Indian subcontinent coming down to that centre. There's one in China and there's one in Brazil. We obviously people from Latin America, all over Latin America, go to the Brazilian centre. We're going pretty ambitious on scale. Um, for the total HSBC Climate Partnership, we're targeting about a third of their population to be engaged in some kind of learning around climate change and building their awareness and understanding of climate change and sustainability. The heart of the programme design is the field programme where we bring a group of 12 HSBC employees um, who have been selected as climate champions to the North American Regional Climate Centre and they spend two weeks learning about climate change, sustainability and what they can do to take action. They spend their daytime out in the field um, being research assistants for our scientists and collecting data. Um, to contribute towards the research project and then in the evening they go through a series of learning sessions so that'll be a mixture of presentations, discussions, interactive exercises and self-reflection and the basic journey that we take them through on that is looking at climate change so what are the big issues so they really start to understand what's really happening, what's going to happen if we don't change and what the imperative for change is looking at HSBC and why they're interested in climate change, why is a bank bothering about it, what are they doing about it and what is their sustainability strategy and the business case for that, and then looking at what they can do themselves. And I guess that's a really critical piece because that's where they start translating it to their role back in the business. So we work with them to work on what is really important to them, what is motivating to them and what can they do back in the workplace to create that change. This land has been modified by human existence uh, since the colonial days. It's been switching from forested lands into agricultural lands into other purposes and then more recently back into a, to a forested area. So we're very curious to see how this ecosystem is going to respond to climate change. This is really a baseline point that we're uh, establishing. Really our work here was to go by and measure out the tree plots and measure each tree's diameter, classify the types of trees, their canopy types and give them a snapshot of what the, uh, what the forest looks like right now. So in the future, they can come back and use this as a base point in five years, 10 years, or 15 years, and see the change on what the forest looks like in the future versus what it looks like now. Some of the hardest things to do are also some of the hardest things to get funded. And in our case here, the project that we're trying to do is one that can be advanced by having lots of people who uh, are smart, and enthusiastic and hardworking and do a large assemblage of, of, of number taking uh, in a short amount of time. The amount of man hours that we're going to produce here at just at this center over the five-year partnership is going to be something close to about 18,000 man hours of just pure hours in the field which is pretty powerful. That's the equivalent of what one scientist would do in a 30-year 30 years of his, of his career. The climate champions, as we call them, they have a really important role to play back in the business because they have to go back and champion climate change within HSBC. And what that means is we expect them to do a project themselves, which is, re which is related to climate change and sustainability. We also expect them to become a role model for other employees. And estimate the chargeback cost, and then I have to kind of extrapolate from out of that what the uh, energy cost is. So if we're able to translate our carbon emissions effectively and saying we've reduced it, then we'll have a short-term reduction of costs Correct. right away since okay. we've committed. And there is some really hard business benefit in terms of cost savings, in terms of, um, in terms of the kind of business efficiencies. But also there's a lot of benefits in terms of employee engagement and employee development. I think what I've learned the most is that I'm not alone as far as this fight is concerned. I have my fellow HSBCNs who are 
so phenomenally motivated. It just gives rejuvenates me with so much energy to go back and put in 200 percent effort in the in the cause that we so strongly believe in. One of the things that we know from some external evaluation that we've done recently is that 92 percent of climate champions do say that they have, after going through the program, they are factoring environmental considerations into their day-to-day -day decision making. Now, if you're thinking about sustainability being a core competency for organizations going forward, then they're developing a whole range of current leaders and future leaders who make decisions based on broader environmental, social and economic issues.